doing this stupid thing where you're both trying to get it nice and lateral and taking a photo like that. And that, obviously, there's still a lot of data in there in, in that specimen. You know, uh, I could probably Photoshop out my like, pictures if I wanted to, but you know, I, I don't think you need to there. Um, again, these lower creeds are nice because they, they're, they, they get, they're they're encased in a bony armor, so they don't you know flop over like a fish. They'll, they'll hold their, their uh, posture pretty well. So handheld shots. You know, there's a lot of data in there, and then. Um, you want kind of a neutral background, you can hold it up to the sky to get a nice blue background. Um, or you just, in this case, this is, this is as high throughput as I get. So these fish, um, you can't photograph them in a photo tank because they have an adipose layer in their skin. As soon as you put them in the formaldehyde, it goes opaque. So I was like, damn, I'm not. But they have an incredible amount of variation in the color patterns on their sides, okay? And we don't know whether that color variation is species specific or just they're very variable. So I needed a lot of pictures of these things in their lives, in their lives with their live coloration. So I just started holding them in my hand and, and just photographing these things um, as many as I could to, to, to be able to uh, capture that, that color information made later. Um, yeah. Uh, same net makes nice background for <laughs> I think so. Again, you see the glare there a little bit on the head, but um, yeah, so that I think a saying that's better than sand in this case because you can slay the pins out if you're the group. Um, a beach makes for a good uh, a beach makes for a good shot too. Um, just, and then again, be mindful of some interesting things about your, your fish or whatever you can photograph of for talks or for the internet. <laughs> specimens in there, again, you've got this glare thing going on. But with some Photoshop, you can get rid of that glare and, and mask it. Uh, yeah, so there's the glare, that's with the glare. That's on these stand. Glare on. And then you mask it out. This is probably the most doctoring I've done to a photo. I didn't have any, uh, this is for a book. I didn't have any um, good photos of this fish at the time. So, uh, it was taken at night, so you got a lot of glare on there. You changed the, uh, rotated it 90 degrees. Uh, I mass out everything, everything, including my hand, but just, you still don't see my fingers there. Then I used the cloning stamp to kind of go over that. And then I also added some scales to the back. And that's, you know, like, that's, sure, that's cheating. I mean, there might be some purists in here who are like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that with the cloning stamp. That's that's unethical. And uh, we are going to be discussing imaging ethics, so uh, <laughs> we can discuss that. Uh, you know, um, I, I'm not proud of this. Uh, <laughs> You don't realize you haven't hydrated in two hours and the 
sudden fatigue down on you. And so uh, it's really easy to suffer from sunstroke, heat stroke under these conditions. So if, if you're photographing the field, stay hydrated. Um, move up from there. And then uh, oh, so, and I'm also doing work in museums, um, taking fishes. This is, uh, and then uh, you have to also adapt to different museums. So if this is the British Museum. This is the only light source they, gave, they, they had for me, was this uh, uh, thing here. But I made use of it, and, and it, it worked out fine. Uh, again, I had a squeeze tank, but you made a tripod, and uh, I spent a month there taking pictures of fishes like this. So the British Museum has a lot of old stuff, right? So, uh, I mean, that's what it is. That's all you've dealt with, the skin. Um, and, you know, fish is 100, 200 years old. That's what they look like. But if you put them in a photo tank and photograph them in water, they will come alive. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that, uh, that is the best shot you can, or close to the best shot you can get in dry. But, you know, you put it in a photo tank, you spend a couple hours masking it out, and I don't know, that's, there is this a little bit reminiscent. I think just for preservation, I think back when it was collected, I think it was collected from the Tibetan Plateau. And yeah, they probably ate the fillets, but then just Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, another thing I do with uh, specimens, old ones, if I get permission, is that all the old specimens, usually the fins are all folded, and there's a lot of information in the fin. So in this case, you know, just the size of the fin, uh, there's some black in there, uh, there's a pin, there's an insect open and there's an insect pin propping up that dorsal pin. Um, this takes a lot of time, you have to be very delicate and tear the pin. So Mark, uh, this was a this was a specimen in a collection. Yeah, this is a preserved specimen. Not this was a uh, hundred years old, I think. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to capture that information in the fin, you have to manually, you know, there's robots to do this for us. <laughs> <Yeah, they can. laughs> You don't you know that. The you don't know that. I, I, don't, I don't know that. They can't do it for Yes, 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 they can. Yes. But you have to very gently force them, pull that fin open, stick your fin in there, and then gently put the fin back to prop it open like that. Because otherwise, those fins are you know, like this. They can be folded against the body, and you don't know. That, that's a lot of information that, that, that tells you it's a 3D mechanism. Um, if you zoom in, there's tubercles on there. Uh, and you look at this, this um, there, there's some melanophore markings in there. So all this information, again, when I'm shooting, when I'm shooting for these things, let's we'll talk about two. I'm shooting for a, a picture of a specimen that, that a taxon can use to identify unambiguous. This is a type specimen as well. So for type specimens, I'm putting in that extra effort to, um, this is what the name is. So I have a little adjustment there. Um, uh, that was uh, 1846, so that specimen's from 1846, it's pretty old. Um, this stuff, all, the, the tank stuff also works on a hurt pretty well. Uh, let's say, what is it, Chris? You tell me. It's a snake, it's a pit viper, Glodius. Um, from Mongolia, taken in a photo tank. So uh, that's in a photo know. tank. That's a photo tank. Yeah. Just but like recently, it's vertical or horizontal? Uh, well, I mean, I, I positioned it. It's two shots. But recently uh, preserved. It's been a month. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it looks kind of alive, pretty much, right? Yeah. It's no, good. Uh, but it was dead for about a month and preserved for now the hide. Uh, so it's kind of the photo tank brought it back to life. Mm -hmm. In the eye, in the eye, the eye is still. I could have I could have photoshopped that photoshopped that eye really life life, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thirty minutes and I would have had that eye winking at you. <laughs> you have to show right. some restraint, okay? Right, right. Bad snakes don't wink at anything. But um, but uh, that is not photoshopped, that is just that's the way the eye looked like a month after it was taken in a in a photo thing. And again you have no glare on it. Another, another trick in the digital thing.
thing with the with the specimens. This is a, a needle fish. Needle fish are fairly long, so if you want to fit it into one shot, uh, you get good resolution on uh, on the fish. So I take two shots of it: one on the front, one on the back, and you digitally stitch them together. Uh, I think I dodged the snout a little bit, and then um, yeah, they're, they're fine. Max it out. So. The digital stitching part is um, it's just done by eye. I mean, you can do that with robots too. But um, <laughs> on robots. But is that? Uh, right, so here's another one again. Just the trick for in this case um, that was shot on a light background, and the fin margins are kind of hard to see. So I just. Uh, bumped up the contrast on it in the dark levels. And now the, the, the margins, I can see them, like the light background, and then you mask that out, and then uh, you delete that layer, and you've got, you got an accurate mask. Uh, oh, here's this purist, I don't like this one at all. <laughs> uh, so this is a Vandalia catfish. Uh, this is this little uh, South American catfish that has a penchant for uh, inserting itself, swimming up the urethra of um, somebody who's urinating in the water. <laughs> um, has anybody heard this story? Okay. Yeah. So this is an important one. So, so again, for a publication, I, I want to get this one right. And um, and so I got this shot, and, and there's the fins. And these fins, I couldn't tell the margins on this. This, this shot had the best composition for everything. The, the head was in focus, the body, the tail was in focus. It's the only part was these, the, the dorsal and ventral fins were, I couldn't see the margins on them. So I went to one of my other photos in this series of photos, and I found <coughs> a better 